Welcome, everybody, to Apocalypse Otaku. Welcome, everybody. Hello. It is... It's 3 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock on the dot. And you know what time that is. It's Apocalypse because time. Otakunox? Yes. It is time for Apocalypse Otaku. Darn right it is. 3 o'clock all day. Every, well, mostly just Thursdays. We're here. True, 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 true. Um, yep, we're here with all of your anime, manga, and possible craziness insight. And also, for those of you who probably did not see us last week, Happy New Year to everybody. We are officially in 2020, 2020 territory, and I'm rocking a new shirt where it says, Send me nudes. And there's noodles on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get it. I literally could pass it up. It actually has noodles on the shirt. It says, send me nudes. Being noodles. <laughs> yes, send me noodles. Please. <laughs> I will enjoy them. <laughs> Who enjoys them rather too much? What? Who doesn't like noodles? You know, Vic likes noodles. Like noodles. Vic likes noodles. Todd possibly likes noodles, even though he's a vegan. No, nope, probably vegans can't have any meat, it depends on dairy. What kind of vegan you are. Todd likes yogurt, and I'm trying to think when I. Well, then he's not a true vegan. Oh wait, that's dairy. Uh -huh. I think he. I don't even know if he likes yogurt, but <laughs> we're getting off track here. We're derailing yes. the train right now. Yes. <laughs> Either way, for those otaku knots that will be here in the Ohio area or visiting, coming to up to Ohio. Ohio Con starts today. It already has started. Yeah, it already has started, but officially today is the first day of the convention. Ohio Con. We both will be there on Saturday. Saturday. We will both be there on Saturday in cosplay. We like warmth, so we'll be wearing something that will be warm inside. Even though it'll be a female dark knight. Not dark knight, but dark female dark mousy. Mousy. <laughs> That would be uh, bad, though. I'm gonna be one of Vic's characters in an anime, but because I couldn't get the actual wig to the character, because it costs one hundred and fifty dollars, I decided, well, I'll just go for the wig. You could really go to a per you could really go to a wig store and just find a purple wig. That's what I did with my um Haruhi Fujioka. That is the cosplay that I'm going as. I'm going as Haruhi Fujioka from Orin High School Host Club, which Vic. Was in. He plays Tamachan, Tamaki. Um, still trying to work on getting more cosplay. I have two costumes. I have. I have two costumes. Yeah, we both have two. We're probably gonna order more I in the future. Have ordered my third. Yeah, I'm. I'm behind on the cosplay ball game because I got bills and junk. Oh, so I had to. I was thinking. Um. <laughs> try to do Vash. Bash the stampede. Female, female bash the stampede but then Johnny Bosch, we love you. I, I was trying to find boots, and you can find any, or they were too. Find any that would fit me. Speaking of Vash the stampede, Johnny Bosch's birthday was on the sixth. He turned forty-two. Happy birthday, Johnny! Happy birthday, Johnny! Happy birth. Ha well, technically, happy belated birthday. Johnny happy Bosch. Birthday. <laughs> happy belated birthday, Johnny Bosch. I would sing it for you, too. But eh, right, uh, we're not going to do it. We're not, well, I am. I, ju I just choose not to. Um, <laughs> I am. I just don't want to. The thing is, is that, Johnny, if you are listening out there, and we probably know you are good friends with Chuck Huber, who was our last, last year's guest um, for us, he's got my info. If you were, if well, technically you'll he'll he be in West. Love to interview via Skype, if that's convenient for you. Or in studio. Speaking. In studio, if you're anywhere near Columbus. Technically, he will be because he's going to be at the Huntington Convention. West Virginia is three hours away. But at least it's close. It's not like he's all the way in South Carolina. No, close is like he's at the. You know, Hyatt Regency, Regency, you're in Columbus. To me, that's close. 
Nah. Well, he's a he's he's gonna be a state over. He's a state over. No. <laughs> we will. <laughs> we will to see him there at the Huntington oh, no. Comic Con. I have so much going. Yes, we uh, we will try. We, the key word is try because we both work and yes. we would have to save up a whole lot of ducats in order to go down there. But for you, Johnny, it'd be worth it. Yes. And but, see, I, I will be able to save up a whole bunch of money because I'm done buying cars. Cosplay right now. <laughs> Unless I figure out another character that I want to buy. You know. Sa same. I'm. And it's, um, yeah, funny with the cosplay situation. We mentioned this a lot last year. Cosplaying is not cheap. No, it's not. It's not cheap at all. No. Because depending on what you're doing with said cosplay, if you're going full out, then yeah, you'll probably be broke by the time you actually get to the convention. But depending on how you go it, you probably buy it either one piece at a time or all of it together in a group or make it yourself. A lot of people make their own cosplays and the results look great. Or they'll combine one thing with another. Like, you know, you got Star Wars and Disney. I've seen some cosplays where Disney princesses look like uh, people from Star Wars or Stormtroopers. Um, I've seen guys dress up as female characters like Maleficent or like even Wonder Woman for that matter. I've, you know, even in... We're going to anime conventions. We, look, we need to look like anime characters. Mm -hmm. But it, it, even if it's just not an anime convention, every convention has different people cosplaying. Whether it's anime or not. And I enjoy it. I enjoy cosplaying even though it's expensive as crap. And for all those people that make their own cosplays, we salute you. We salute you I, for I making your like own. Selling, so, yeah. I don't either. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Ever, I, don't. Ever, ever again. No, 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 no. I had to. I had to do sewing for a theater class that I took in high school. I hated it. I had to sew on a button. To, like, a fabric that already had a slit in it, you know, like, like you know, like, when you had got suits with buttons in it. Yeah. Like, when you make your own costumes for theater and stuff, you actually have to sew the button into the fabric. I hated it. I hated it so just much. Yes, just one button on a piece of fabric. You had a needle, thread, and a button. You had to sew it on the fabric. And I'm thinking, like, I hate this. <laughs> I hope I don't have to sew anything as long as I live. I really don't. I hated it. Well, I hated it. I had to make an entire costume for my son. That's... That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to have help from my mother. That, that's why I have a grandmother. She knows how to sew. <laughs> I'll ask her. Uh, I'll ask her to make stuff. And then also, um, Vic streamed two nights ago, kicking off the new year, right? And his hat was so... Fun looking. He said he hadn't worn that hat in a long time. It was a custom made hat, a fan made for him. It had all of the characters going around that he voiced. Ed literally being dead center on the hat, and I loved it. It got it had Ed, Sabo, Tamaki, um, and I did watch Drifters last night. I was literally I'm on I pass I finished episode six. I saw Vic's character. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, that wouldn't be the first time Vic voiced a character with that heavy of makeup. In one of the Oron episodes, the rest of the host club dressed up as girls. And Tomiki's makeup was so heavy, and I'm thinking like, well, wouldn't be the first time uh, Vic voiced someone in drag. So, <laughs> but it was funny to see his character, like, <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> It was, uh, he was very flamboyant. <laughs> the character was very flamboyant, to say the least, in Drifters. Um, but the. Very flamboyant. Yes, very, very flamboyant. Um, the hat that he wore, back to our regularly scheduled programming somewhat. <laughs> the hat that he wore had uh, was a custom made hat 
custom made for Dora that a fan made him that had all of the characters that he had voiced going all the way around. And I'm pretty sure Dark Mousy was probably somewhere on that hat. You just can tell because there were so many characters stitched onto that one hat. But it was a very it was a very nice sewn hat that a fan made for him. And whoever made that, I give them props. Yikes. Yeah. But they did a good job. There there weren't any there were no blood stains <laughs> on the <laughs> blood stains on the hat from the no, sewing. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. They probably had a very skilled hands, like very steady hands, unlike most people that probably so. I know I would suck at it. I'd probably go like, eh! <laughs> Try not to stick myself, and then I stick myself. <laughs> All right, so I went to Bounding in the comics just now, and uh, before we got on air, mm -hmm. and... Uh, They've already started filming the live-action Cowboy Bebop series. And it is... It's going to be on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Which I am not happy about. For those of you who don't have streaming services, get Netflix now. <laughs> well, hopefully they'll put it on DVD. That's what I'm hoping for. They might. If, you know, if Netflix gives the okay to do that. <laughs> oh, Pop does it to me every time. Uh, Toonami has announced the premiere date for Sword Art Online Alicization, Alicization War of the Underworld. Mark your calendars. Oh, let's find it. Oh, it's going to premiere on Saturday, January 18th at midnight. So mark your calendar, you Taku Nots, and all you Sword Art Online fans. January 15th is the date. So let's hope you guys get all your winks asleep in, because you're going to need to stay up for this one. Or just set your DVR. That's what, what, do. That's what Shard does. <laughs> I don't. That way I don't lose any sleep. Because I, even though I work late at night, I want to come home and I want to go to bed. <laughs> I think that's everybody that has a job. Late at night? Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. But, yeah. I cannot wait for this. Because the last scene of Sword Art Online Alicization, it showed that uh, uh, Kibito... Spoilers! ...died. Possibly. For those of you who did not want to hear that spoiler, mute it. <laughs> Too late now. Well, I haven't seen it, so now I've been spoiled. I already know, because i kind of just seen a, a snippet of it. So, Oh, look, they got a bit of the Toonami schedule for the anime block for us already up there. Thank you, Grinding in the Comics. Well, this is, they said this is probably... Going to be oh, the schedule? It's a, a full schedule of January 18th in the morning of Jan January 19th. So it's going to have all these... So the premiere of I'm surprised they put Naruto Shippuden still on there. Naruto Shippuden is ended. Okay, half of these series that are on here have already ended already. Doctor Stone ended. Fire Force is well, actually Doctor Stone and Fire Force are supposed to be getting their second season soon. Um, yeah. Um, Attack on Titan has yet to release another season. Naruto Shippuden has been done. Right now, they're on to Boruto, Naruto Next Generations. Black Clover's still going on. Uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventures, I think, is still going on, isn't it? Season, yeah. Um, Food Wars... I know, I... They're reading the... I can't remember his, his name. Headquarters, I want to say. Yeah, they're in his headquarters right now. And that's what you're on. Mm-hmm. But I'm way far ahead. I'm at the. Um, I'm, at a, I'm at a way. So ahead. how do you know what I'm on? You're at the. You're pretty much at the beginning part where the heroes and the police 
are raiding into um, Overhaul's fortress to save Ori right now. Yeah. Yeah, you're... Yeah, <laughs> probably not there, is, so... You're not gonna tell me. No, I can't tell you! That spoils the purpose! That spoiled it! You have to find out for yourself! It's probably uh, not for yourself. Well, you already spoiled Sword Art Online Alicization for everybody. I'm not, not spoiling really. my... Well, just the end. If they haven't watched it on Toonami, then... That's on you. <laughs> well, not a lot of people pay for cable, okay? Because <laughs> cable is expensive. Um, okay, comic book wise, Jonathan Hickman and R.B. Silva um, are supposed to reunite in X Men number five. Hmm. Okay, that sounds funny. And this is supposed to be a play on... Oh, okay, I got it, I got it. The Magalorian. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. Funny that you mentioned that, um, since Vic is a huge Star Wars nerd. He literally went... This is not Star Wars. This is... Oh, yeah, it is Star Wars. Yeah, it is Star Wars. <laughs> Her brain's not functioning properly today, everybody. <laughs> Funny that you mentioned that. We all, everybody should know this by now. Vic is a, the biggest nerd ever if it comes to Star Wars or Star Trek. He literally... I don't know if he's the biggest nerd. Well, one of... Probably one of the biggest nerds that we know of. Like, you know, not personally, but, you know, from the looks of it, he's pretty much a nerd um he actually did a little photoshop project that's <laughs> for those of you who have seen or at least heard of back to the future check out his twitter and you'll know what i mean that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> Because they it, it had the same, you know, somewhat, well, one included a time machine and the other one mentioned Magdalorian. <laughs> it's just funny <laughs> about the photo. Okay, and Sean Gordon Murphy announces Catwoman miniseries. And then shows off the design. He can't show it. No. Well. Mm-hmm. Does the Marvel Universe have a clone problem? No. Does it? Marvel Comics may or may not have a dilemma on their hands. In summer crossover event, House of X and Powers of X, writer Jonathan Hickman will reveal... Here. Uh, revealed that the X-Men had begun not just uh, resurrecting their fallen, recent fallen comrades, Chamber, Wolfsbane, Banshee, Multiple Man, and Magic, for example, but were well on their way to restoring every victim of human on mutant violence over the years. All very ambitious and benevolent. Hmm. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. I don't think they have a cloning problem. I don't think so either. No. Anywho, for those of you who are not subscribed, We are trying hard to get to 100. 
100. And when we get to 100, that subscriber will get a copy of John Wick 3 Parabellum or Spider-Man Far From Home. That will be your choice specifically. Mm -hmm. So subscribe, hit that notification bell, slap that like button like there's no tomorrow. And sharing is caring. As always. And leave your comments about your favorite anime character below. Or a series that you like to watch. Yes. And we're going on to the MCU rumor mill. Rumor mill. Woo! Okay. So we have Spider Man news. Spider Man 3 news. Let's hear it. Spider-Man 3 should start filming very soon, about the summer of this year. Awesome. For those of you who don't know what year it is, it's 2020. 2020. That means all the Marvel stuff is going to be coming full force, especially for next year. Spider-Man 3 is going to take place about six months after Far From Home. And dealing with the repercussions of what happened in the movie. Ooh. Well, in that movie. In, the, in Spider-Man Far From Home is what she's saying. I'm not saying because, well, number one, I haven't watched it. Me there's neither. There's probably a few people out there who haven't watched it. I haven't watched it either. This so is a no means, spoiler zone. So that means that it could ha have a possible... Release date of July 16th of 2021. Mm. That's about a year from when they started filming. There is also the real possibility that Deadpool may be in Spider-Man 3. Mm. Anyway. And in Doctor Strange news, you may poss possibly see Namor in the Good Doctor's second movie. Ooh. I know what you're asking. How can a character that's owned by another movie company, Universal, appear in a Marvel movie? Yeah. Well, as long as Marvel doesn't do any standalone movies for Namor or Hulk, they can appear in Marvel movies with, with another character. Part two! Next day. <laughs> Will the former Dark Knight be in Marvel's Thor Love and Thunder? Possibility. Of course, the former Dark Knight I am referring to is Christian Bale. Oh, yeah. He's talking to Marvel to play the horse like character called Beta Ray Bill. Sounds like a tax collector. <laughs> <laughs> Beta Ray Bill! I'm here to look at your tax forms, ma'am, and I see you owe the government about $500. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. It sounds like a bill collector. <laughs> bill collector name. <laughs> Keep going, please. Right now, <laughs> they are just talking, not officially cast yet. <laughs> Don't take it seriously. Nope. I can't take that name seriously. <laughs> That's his name, Beta Ray Bill. <laughs> you should see the picture of him. He looks like a horse. <laughs> I'll look it up later. <laughs> I can't. Oh, man. Now that's going to be going through my mind all day. I'm going to like. <laughs> all right. Um, so besides Black Widow. Uh, coming out this year. Mm -hmm. There's another movie that's going to be dropped, and I don't think anybody knows about this movie. What is said movie? 
Um, so did everybody just forget or have their brain washed that Morbius is coming out this year? I have a feeling we all did. I know I did. I know I did. <laughs> We all forgot, okay? Or we were possibly brainwashed. Um, The the possibility is because it's starring Jared Leto. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. It's probably because of the Joker character he portrayed in uh, Suicide Squad. Script writing. And he's playing Morbius. Mm. Also, Morbius is supposed to be connected to the Blade universe. Ooh. So we're talking about the Blade. Yes. So I don't know as of yet if Blade <laughs> will be in more in the Morbius movie if, or vice versa. There's just virtually no info on this movie. We are. We have yet to be informed about any of this. I, I don't, nobody's been informed of any of it. Well, the only thing we know is that um, Jared Leto is supposed to be in Morbius, but so far we don't know anything else but that. He's had to keep it under wraps. On a lot of prosthetics. I saw a picture of his character, and he's wearing a lot of prosthetics. Mm. It's been reported that some scenes will be shot in Singapore, also Australia, New Zealand, and some other countries. In the movie itself, there may be a martial arts tournament. Sweet. To be put on by the Mandarin. Hmm. I'm talking about the real one, not the one in Iron Man 3. Mm. The one that was in Iron Man 3 was the fake Mandarin. Right. Which was played by Ben Kingsley. Hmm. So, the winner of the tournament will get the Ten Rings. But as always, these are just rumors. Take them with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if it's not confirmed, and if we are not definite about these, Mm -hmm. then we can't tell you. Now, whether or not it's true. Yeah. We just read what's on the webpage. But or what's been put out there. Yeah, what's been put out there and what's, you know, on the web. Um, but before I can get into manga torture, like I said with uh, Vic streaming, um, with the Mandalorian thing, with the Photoshop, and his very awesome hat, I kind of chimed in to his stream. I try to almost every day, but I make sure other people get a chance to because everybody wants to talk to Vic Mignogna, and who doesn't? Um, I mentioned to him, for those of you who don't know or who have not YouTube any of his panels and heard about the Sherman the Shark story, you better look that up right now. Not not now while you're watching you us, but later. Said now. No, I didn't mean now, now, like later, now. <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> I didn't mean right now. Like, put it in, like, a reminder. After, after the show. After the show. Look up the shark, uh... Any of Vic's Vic Mignogna, panels. Sherman the Shark story. Or really just look up Vic Mignogna panels, and you'll literally see any video of him talking to a panel, and he'll mention that said story. He loves sharks. He did a research paper on them when he was young. He even caught a baby sand shark and named him Sherman. 
He'll be be able to explain it more than I can in any of those panel videos. Um, I mentioned to him that I posted a photo on Twitter and also on the Risible Rangers um, fan Facebook page. By the way, best fan club ever, Risible Rangers. Um, I posted a photo of some shark slippers that I got from a store here, here in Ohio. Pretty sure they're probably across the state called Five Below. They were five bucks, and they're the best five bucks I've ever spent. And they were in the shape of sharks. As soon as I told him about it, his face lit up. <laughs> he was like, I must see these. And I already passed along the info to him, and I'm pretty sure he's probably going to buy a pair for himself. And if he comes here, comes up here to Ohio, and any of the local cons around here, I'm going to cosplay as Rin Matsuoka from Free, who he voiced. I'm going to get a shark onesie. You're not going to wear a Speedo, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Heck no. No. Uh, no. <laughs> no, for, for those of you who, when she mentioned that, Free is basically about a bo a club of boys, a group of boys that join a swim, join a swim club. So they all wear Speedos and swim. And that's about it. That's all it. That That's pretty much... Um, just watch the okay, anime for got, yourself, and that's it. I got backstroke for days. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who did not get that reference, yep. The thing is, I didn't know this. Turns out there were three people, um, three to four. There were actually four guys that were on that cast of Free: Todd Habercorn, Vic Mignogna, Johnny Bosch, Greg Ayers. And J. Michael Tatum. All five of them were a part of that. <coughs> a part of that series, which is basically like Oran High School Host Club. How ironic, though, that they were in free, which is kind of like Oran High School Host Club in a swimming pool. And then a couple of years later, they get cast in Oran. How funny is that? I just realized that now. Because it's a fun kawinky dink, isn't it? <laughs> but his face lit up when I mentioned that I got shark slippers, and he's going to get a pair of his own. Pretty sure he's probably going to post it on Twitter once he probably gets them. Um, well, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I don't, I don't doubt anything when it comes to Vic Mignogna. Um, either way, when he does come up here to Ohio at a local convention, I'm going to cosplay as Rin. I'm going to get a shark onesie. Wear my shark slippers and wear a reen wig and have a shark plushie. Depending on the weather, I will wear something. Yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, I'm going to be, cos like I said, cosplaying as Dark Mousy. Yeah, we'll... Because it's going to be cold. It probably will be cold in the um, my convention center. It probably will be cold in the convention center. Because, you know, you got a lot of equipment going on in there, and it's going to be pretty cold. That's the reason why I'm glad I, my cosplay comes with a coat. <laughs> Mine doesn't. Well, it comes with a jack. It comes with like a comes blazer. Pockets, I, I don't think mine has pockets. I'll just have to make sure I wear a pair of pants that has pockets. Or just wear a jacket or something. But either way, um, like, I, like I said before... Depends on how, is the material thin on the pants, or? I think so. Okay, then, yeah, at least wear something like leggings or something under it so your legs aren't freezing. Well, I need something with pockets so I can put money in it. Mon yeah. Why not just carry your purse with you? Is that Hawkins saying? <laughs> <laughs> or, like, they're pr I'm pretty sure they'll probably have, like, bags or something that we could probably buy and then just carry those around. Because all cons have those. But I'm not going to put my money in it. I didn't mean that. I, the... need, so I need pockets. <laughs> I just need pockets. Okay. <laughs> we'll discuss the pocket situation later. <laughs> but as I mentioned, as I stated before, I'm going to cosplay as Breen, basically getting ready for bed. <laughs> if he had a shark plushie, a shark onesie, and his shark slippers. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be the cutest little Reen ever. <laughs> well, now on to manga torture. 
after us spewing about Vic Mignogna, which we love. Time for manga torture. <laughs> torture time. Come on, grab your friends and join two very distant lands. <laughs> Otaku girl and Char the human. Fun will never end. Torture time. <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. It, the moment was there, and now it's gone now. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, I already read for last week's stuff that was released on the 6th and the 7th. So, since it's passed, we're moving on to next week. So, on the 13th, all our otaku knots in the UK, you got a lot of stuff coming your way in the form of DVD and Blu-rays. So, listen up. Devil's Line Collection Blu-ray. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure set one and two, Phantom Blood slash Battle Tendencies, and then, well, it's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure set one, Phantom Blood slash Battle Tendencies, and then JoJo's Bizarre Adventure set two, Stardust Stardust Crusaders Part One. Ah, uh, Stardust Crusaders is the best one, according to Shark. <laughs> <laughs> Jotaro Kujo. Oh, that brings me back to our, um, what was it? What was, uh... No, I'm talking, I'm referring to one of our battles that we did. Oh, yeah, it was Jotaro that won. Yeah. But who, but who was Jojo facing against? Was it a, no, that was... No, I'm talking about, like, the, like, what anime was Jojo's Bizarre Adventures going up against? Dio? No. The a JoJo's Bizarre Adventures characters against what other anime? Oh, uh, we I know Jotaro faced Dio. I know that. I'm trying to think back of what anime series went toe to toe against them. Doesn't matter. Jotaro won. <laughs> JoJo wins. <laughs> okay, so there'll be two um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures DVDs heading your way in the United Kingdom. One pop. Man, collection one will be on Blu-ray and DVD on the 13th. Tokyo Ghoul Re Part One DVD, and then Tokyo Re Tokyo Re Part One Collector's Edition Blu-ray will also be released on the 13th. And then Zombie Land Saga Season One will both be released on Blu-ray and DVD. Now heading on to the 14th, we got. Why do we always get manga? We rarely get DVDs here. <laughs> like, rarely. <laughs> we rarely get any DVD releases here. <laughs> we, get, we get some, <laughs> just not a lot. It's on your list. Well, this, it's just your list. I know. I get the DVD releases, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. You get the DVD. I cover the manga. and Well, I get mostly DVDs from, like, other countries on this list, but that's about it. Okay, so moving on to the 14th. Case Close, Volume 37. Himoto Umaru-chan, Volume 8. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Hitoroji mi... Hito... Wait, hold on. Her <laughs> I have glasses and yet I still can't see. <laughs> He told Jorime, my hero, six. If I could reach you, three. Okay. <laughs> okay. Knights of Shindana, Master Edition 4. Persona 5, Volume 1. Pokemon Sun and Moon, Volume 6. Radiant, Volume 9. Sakuto and Nada, Volume 3. Splatoon, Volume 8. Splatoon. Yes, a video game has a manga series, and it's on their eighth volume. Yeah. The thing is, it's a video game! So weird. Okay. The Homestruck Epilogues. What? My lord. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Okay. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Volume 6. 
to Love Rue Darkness, Volume 14. Uzaki-chan wanted to hang out. Volume 2. Yamada-chan and the Seven Witches, 21 through 22. And then Yokai Watch, Volume 13. So that is all your manga and DVD releases heading into next week. What do we got on that tsunami schedule? And I already don't like the first two. Jesus! Ah, uh, we already know what they are. Because it was just like this last week. So let's move on. Yay! And starting at 9 o'clock, they're hot, they're juicy, and they're always a fresh... What's there, Bob? Burgers. Der burgers. <laughs> Der burgers. <laughs> and at 10 o'clock, it's Barry's favorite show of all time. It's Family Guy. Yeah, we all have that Family Guy. <laughs> and at 11 o'clock, it's My Hero Academia. Woo! They're on season four, and it's getting good. Mm -hmm. Ooh, they're at Sun Eater of the Big Three. Oh, and another thing, Aaron Dismuke voices Tamaki, which is Sun Eater, and he's going to be at Ohio Con on Saturday. Uh -huh. Oh! Steve Bloom's already here. Yeah. What? It? What? He's here in Columbus. Oh, duh, because he's got a Q&A today. He's here in the building. I know he's not here in the building. I mean, he's here in Columbus at Ohio Con because he's got a Q&A. He ah. We could ask him on Saturday, but he'll probably be gone. But we could always ask him for a Skype interview. You can ask him for a short interview there. Yeah, but it would have to be after his autograph session. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> it's only an hour. True. Because... Okay, we're off topic. Moving on. <laughs> right, back to what we were talking about. <laughs> Dr. Stone. Love that show. And at midnight is One Punch Man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. Oh my God. We're laughing about the title of the episode. We, if you have seen One Punch Man, you know how crazy this show is. Oh my gosh. As soon as I saw I'm it, I'd be like, I'm not gonna tell you all it is. Just look up the tsunami schedule. Uh, you know, don't. Because if you look it up on your phone, then you won't see the title. But if you look it up on your computer, it'll show you'll, you uh, you'll, you'll understand why we're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Only one oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Fire Force at 12:30. Bring on season two, baby. Fire Force. And at 1 a.m. is Food Wars. John Grevion was on that show as the French chef. And he is a very nice guy. He's awesome. We love he you, might, John. He might occasionally play an evil dude, and he can play evil. Uh-huh. I just showed you how versatile he is. All VAs are versatile. Some more than others. Uh, moving on. At 1.30 <laughs> is Demon Slayer. Himetsu no Yaiba. And at 2 a.m. is Black Clover. Yes. 2.30 is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind. Mm. Where he comes from the bottom. And 3 a.m. is Naruto Shippuden. Whoop, whoop. At 3 a.m. is the, uh, the, 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 plea. the Promised Neverland. <laughs> she couldn't get it out. 4 a.m. is Attack on Titan. 4.30 is... Well, you've seen... Uh, the 
know, take a break, go get a snack, get a drink or two. Um, Super take jail. a half hour, go to, to the jail ball and exercise all night. Mm-hmm. Anyway, at 5 a.m. is Aqua Teen. Not to be mistaken for the original, which is Aqua Teen Hunger Force. But I'm sure Aqua Teen is still as good as its former mm-hmm. title. Yep. Still has fries, an extra shake, and, and meat wad. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and it's 5.30 in the morning, we got... Home Movies. And that is your Toonami schedule for Saturday, January 11th. Now, okay, before you click off that schedule, half of these shows that we have just read either are still going, getting another season, or have ended and they're just airing reruns. That's because they're waiting until they can actually put their shows on. Yeah. Now, with, I'm trying to think, it's Dr. Stone. They're getting their second season. It's confirmed sometime this year, as well as Fire Force is getting another season. Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online, yep, they're getting another season as well. And Promise Neverland is getting a second season. So. I wouldn't be surprised if Demon Slayer doesn't. Second season. Why? Why wouldn't it surprise you? Or would it surprise you? Or not? I don't. Ugh. Well, as good as the animation is, of it course, is it's going really, to get it. Really, it's really that good. It definitely will get a second Story season. Lines, the artistry, it is very, very good. Oh, that's another thing. I actually got my. Um, I put on my uh, Amazon wish list for cosplay. Um, uh, Nezuko cosplay um you know the main character sister that's now a demon and just rolls around in that box oh i'm going to be her <laughs> i'm gonna she's cosplay as her she's not gonna be able to talk because she's gonna have a piece of bamboo in her mouth yeah plus it works because she's small so <laughs> i'm not gonna carry you around in a box <laughs> I don't think her cosplay comes with the box. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to dress up as her brother. And no, carry her no, in a box. no, no. If we did do a cosplay together, I would be Ed and you'd be Al because you're taller than I am. Oh, no. I, I'm not wearing armor. I mean, it wouldn't truly be armor, but. It would be hard to get around in that. And plus, sitting down? No. <laughs> well, maybe you could just wear the helmet and then just walk around and maybe just like a shirt. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> wear the oh, helmet. <laughs> you go like, oh, I'm not the full metal alchemist. She is. What? You mean the little shorty over there? Who are you calling short? Can a shorty do this? <laughs> I'm still growing, you backwater desert idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Go like you stay out of this, Al. <laughs> eh, that'd be fun. <laughs> and that's when I pull you away. <laughs> You're like, like Al, put me down. <laughs> you go like you didn't drink your milk, Ed. I don't like it. <laughs> I think it's gross. <laughs> Thing is, I love milk. I just don't like cheese touching certain parts of my food. I'll eat mac and cheese. I just don't like cheese on my burger. Yeah, I'm a mystery. Okay, moving on to DVDs. And for January 14th, which, by the way, is next Tuesday, whoop, whoop. we have your DVD and Blu-ray releases. All right. We have <laughs> Clockwork Planet Complete Series on Blu-ray. Seems kind of cool. Hmm. Dragon Ball Super Part 10 DVD or Blu-ray episodes 118 through 31, 131. Have fun. <laughs> and gamers, complete series, Blu-ray, Essentials. 
<laughs> Night and magic. I had to get the words in the right position. Yeah. Complete series Blu ray essentials. Okay. And this is part of. No. Who wants to pull it up? Oh, it's still there. Yay. Hopefully it's not all scuffed. Is it scuffed? scuffed Please don't let it be scuffed and scratched up. If it is, so help us. So help them. Yeah. <coughs> Magical girls. Oscar. Complete series on Blu-ray. So it sounds like magical girls that are special ops? Apparently it's just one. Her name's Oscar. Hmm. Ah, uh, and the price of smiles. Which I always thought were free. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that show is on Blu-ray. And that is your DVD and Blu-ray releases for Tuesday. Sounds a. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if you can. Yeah. Hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, yep. Uh, mm. What was I right? Yeah, it is a bunch of girls. Boom! Called it! And is put up by. Funny business. Price of Smiles. Oh, Price of Smiles is put out by Section, Section 23. 23. So, everybody go out and buy Price of Smiles. It looks like it has mechs in it, y'all. Go buy it. Section 23, as we all know, is... Uh, what did I say? Wasn't it... Um, uh, the successor of ADV. ADV. So, go out and buy it. Shar <laughs> <Sure> demands it. <laughs> she. Demand it, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what's that. Oh, I'm currently watching that one. It's basically about nerds that, you know, have level. Is there any DVD that they're not putting out? Nope. I know. Really? Hold on, wait, hold up. Um, for next week. Um, uh, no, that's funny. Mm. Ah. Viz. Of course, that's Viz. Naruto and Burrito, of course, Viz. That's funny. Section twenty-three. Oh, there you go. More success. Basically about a guy that lives with monster girls, and let's just say there's a lot of fan service and tails and feathers and appendages. Basically, it's the government accepting monsters into uh, society. Or hybrid girls. Or people. A host house. <laughs> So, it's actually a series. Uh, age range, age rating on this one is seventeen plus. So it's intended it for mature audiences. In it, so it's intended for mature audiences only. So. Um, let's see. So, G Kids. I don't think I've heard of that company. Summer Days with Co. Uh, what Here, I'll look it up. We're doing anime research while we're looking at DVD titles. I know who that's put out by. Mm. No Game, oh, no, no, no Life, game Section, no 23. Life Section 23. I love that series. They need more. series if it's put out by Section 23. No, they actually aired like the first um, season of No Game, No Life on Hulu. And I finished uh, all of it. Yeah. Well, 
Mm-hmm. Oh, studio. Oh, G Kids is actually Studio Ghibli. Oh. I did not know that. Well, now we know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> But majority of all those DVDs are probably released by Funny. Funny Biz now. Well, except, isn't JoJo Bizarre Adventures licensed by Viz? Yeah. Okay, so. Mm, some give or take away. Most of it is let out by Funny Business. The rest is put out by Viz or Section 23. So, yeah. And, I'm trying to think, why was Brink... I'm mad because I didn't bring this up when I was mentioning Rin's cosplay if Vic came up here to Ohio. Um, let's just say we all know L.A. is a pretty crazy place. Pretty much. Let's just say Todd Hapricorn was involved in something, but he's okay. Everyone's okay. Everyone made it out okay. He was okay. on the news. He was on the L.A. news. <laughs> he, he was witness to something that happened. <laughs> Basically, two armed gunmen in an RV, and the driver escaped. Or was that the driver or one of the gunmen? The driver that got the driver was the guy that got out. He said there were two armed gunmen in the RV, and then the police literally picked called, him up. Somebody called nine one one, and then they came and surrounded the RV. Yeah, but everyone's okay. Who was involved in the incident? There were no casualties. Don't worry, Todd's, Todd's okay. fine. He's fine. He if, can still talk. If you want to look at the video, it's on the Star Trek Continues Twitter page. They put Todd in it and they mentioned Spock had a very uh, interesting encounter. <laughs> For those of you who didn't get that, Todd played Spock. <laughs> and he's growing out his hair again, so that's good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh. So yep, we got that established. Todd's okay. We're all hunky dory. We're trying. We're talking about cons. We're talking about voice actors. Talk about DVDs, manga releases, and magical girls that are basically in the army. Speaking of magical girls, <laughs> it's battle time, y'all. It is battle time, everybody, and thank everybody on Anime and Emo for voting on your guys' favorites on who should move on. And I'm kind of mad because we don't get a lot of comments on these no more. It stinks. Well, they probably don't want to comment on this particular one. Because it's a magical girl thingy. Yeah, magical girl thingy. Yeah, magical. Yeah, magical, magical girl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All sparkly and stuff. Yeah. So, which side are we starting with first? Are we starting yeah, with this? We'll start with this side. All right. We'll start with the Sailor Scouts. We got Sailor Pluto versus Princess Sailor Moon. There were. The uh, last time I knew, Princess mm-hmm. Pluto is supposed to be the strongest Sailor Scout. <laughs> Not in this poll. That's what I figured. <laughs> Not in this poll. That's what I figured. <laughs> okay, so there were 12 people liked it. 20 votes were cast. One person liked Pluto. Oh, no. The, the, uh, there were more votes for Pluto. Okay. Just, uh, let's Two see. Two people liked Pluto. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let's just get down to the numbers, all right? Okay, so Sailor Pluto, 25%. So she got some love. Princess Sailor Moon, 75%. Like I said, two people like Pluto. No, 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 no. There was, um, there was more. Like one, two, three, four, five people voted for her. Now, you said two. You I know, I know. <laughs> she wrote them that way, not me. <laughs> I didn't write them that way. 
No, the way. The, um, never mind. <laughs> okay. Um. Nope, not that. Okay, one. so Saturn versus Sailor Moon. Okay, thirteen people liked it. Twenty-nine votes were cast. Sailor Saturn. Thirty-four point five. Miss Sailor Moon, 65.5. You were right. Char said that it's going to be Princess Sailor Moon versus Sailor Moon. And here we are. We're right there. <laughs> you guys realize she's facing herself, right? <laughs> it's going to be chaos and mayhem. <laughs> okay. Now... For some reason, I know I loaded the graphic on here, but there's no wait, graphic. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, you have to cross them out. Yeah. All right, now okay. we correct some. Okay, so I know I loaded. Yeah, I know I loaded the graphic on my jump drive, but clearly my computer was being a butt. So I'm just gonna read the numbers right here. There. So it was Homer Lily versus Homer. So basically. It's her magical girl self versus a witch form of herself. And there were eight. Eight people liked it. Thirteen votes were cast. So, Homer Lily, 23.1. Then, Homer Kemi, 76.9. So, Homer moves on. And then last but certainly not least, in our Madoka Magica fight, we have Kyogo versus God Madoka. So 10 people like the poll. 28 votes were cast. Let's get down to these numbers between these two ladies, shall we? Yay, Kyoko, 25%. Madoka, 75%. Jeez, it's like Sailor Pluto versus Princess Sailor Moon. But either way, we are down to four. We are down to four, people. The final four. The final four. Now, which one of these ladies from their respective animes will go on? Will it be Princess Sailor Moon or regular Sailor Moon? I think it will be Sailor Moon. Hmm. Who knows? It, it might. Either way, it's gonna be Sailor Man. Duh. <laughs> it's just either her super powered up form. Either it's gonna be her power up form, or it's gonna be her normal form. Either way, it's gonna be Sailor Moon. So we got Sailor Moon versus Princess Sailor Moon for our Sailor Scout side, and then for Madoka Magica, we have Homer Kemi versus God Madoka. The poll will be going it's up. It's going to be weird. That's uh, all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. Either way, the poll will be going up after we're done, and we post this onto our YouTube page as well. Make sure you guys subscribe. Hit that like button. Give us suggestions basically either on our YouTube by commenting in the comments or, you know, bringing it up on our, on our Twitter page at Apocalypto Talk one um, what battles should we do next? Because when it comes to coming up with battles, we can't do anything, like, we can't do any DBZ. Sorry for your luck, we can't. Sorry. Because... No Dragon Ball Z, no Dragon Ball GT, mm -mm. no Dragon Ball... Nope. Uh, no Dragon Ball Super... No Dragon Ball Z Kai! No Dragon Ball Z... Dragon Ball Z Kai is Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, still, it, we can't do any Dragon Ball, period. No, At all. Because we already know who's going to win. Goku. Goku. <laughs> it's funny Simple when... Math. I mean, <laughs> Goku's got it hands down. It's funny, though, when we did a battle of uh, anime men. When we did an all men's we anime battle royale. Yeah. yeah, we didn't. We did not include on Goku. On purpose. We did that on purpose. Because mm -hmm. we knew. Goku was going to win. Yeah. And plus, um, the head honcho at the time, um, 
no D no D V Z and we're sticking to that because if we do so it now we, we do completely understand that it's Dragon Ball Z has been uh, put been around out for and yeah been played out. Yeah, it's been around forever, and we all know all of their powerhouses, so there's no point in putting DBZ against each other, because, again, Goku wins all the time! Every single time. And the thing is, they have huge juggernauts, like Broly, Vegeta, Piccolo, Trunks. They have all these power, oh, powerful guys, Android, Android 17, 18. Goten. All of these guys! are superhuman and again even when you think they're dead they're not dead they turn god yep yeah vic mignano will tell you the story <laughs> it's a throat ripper working for that series yeah either way though it the people that actually put in the effort to actually screaming yeah i can't do that Nothing but yelling. Oh my god! <laughs> Literally, Even I can't yell every day. I can't. I know I, I can't. Raise a teenage son. I I have a ten year old sister at home, and I don't even yell at her. Is <laughs> I don't even yell at her a lot, and the way they yell all the time, I I can't. I would probably lose my voice after I'm done recording. I'm gonna be like, you want me to record again? I can. My voice is completely There's shot. The reason why you know. Sean Shumble is known for what he's known for, and, mm -hmm. and he sticks to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure he's been in other anime, but he's not known for that. He's just known for being Goku. Goku. Sorry. That's, that is the truth. Yeah. Even when we talked to Chuck Huber, um, we asked him, did he get recognized for his voice work? He said at GameStop. <laughs> The probably <laughs> the, the most the GameStop. most unlikely place that he got recognized at was a GameStop. You're Android 17. Or aren't you that Dr. Stein dude from that Soul Eater anime? And go like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dad, let's go. <laughs> like Dad, let's go. <laughs> now, I understand that some kids would be embarrassed that their parents are probably voice actors and they get recognized a lot, but I wouldn't. Well, maybe they, at, they, maybe they after a while. For it. Maybe that after. That means they're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And then probably maybe after a while, like some kids will probably get annoyed and go, "Yes, my dad, my dad was in this anime, or my uncle was in that anime, or whatever." Like, they're like, "Aren't you related to uh, yeah. Chuck Cuber?" Go like, "Yes." Yeah. Go like, "Can you give me his autograph or something?" No. No. <laughs> no. But Why not? Because you kind of have to pay for it. <laughs> so. Now, if someone would have asked me, we'd go like, how much are you willing to pay for an autograph for this person? I'd probably pay 50 bucks. Okay, give me 50 bucks, and I'll get you his autograph on something. <laughs> Which, you know, <laughs> on, on uh, Unlock, you can get autographs. They have... Uh, it depends on um, what you want autographs. And also who they, ha who they have for autograph sessions. They only had a few... Yeah, we did pay 40 for ours. We paid 40 for ours. I paid 43 to Tom. Yeah, you got two. You, she got Vic and Actually, Todd's I autograph. Got the third one on the way. Oh, yeah, Kyle um, <laughs> Hebert. I, Kyle Hebert. Yeah, there's no R in his last name. It's just Hebert. 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 No, he says it's pronounced Hebert. Hebert? Mm -hmm. And I okay. just got notification days ago that it's on the way. Alright. So now you've got three. I, I need it. Three. I'm I'm way behind. I only have one and that's from Todd. Not not saying anything. Todd, I love the autograph. I love it. <laughs> 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 I love the autograph. It's just that she's got two more ahead of me. I need more. And and I just know how to spend my money. Yeah. I spend my money mostly on food, so it, oh, noodles. Noodles, yes. <laughs> Hence the shirt. <laughs> hey, I spend my money wisely, okay? When you work in a restaurant, it's not it's not easy. 
Well, you work at McDonald's, so you feel my pain. Not really. I get free food. <laughs> I get I get like fifty percent off and then twenty five percent off, depending on if I'm working or I'm going into any other location of my restaurant. I work at Uncle Charlie's. When I'm so. working, I get free food. Yeah, because you can grab it. Because <laughs> no, it's right there in front of you. And when I'm working and I take a break, I get my you know. Great food is free. Mm. Of course, it always depends on which one you're working at. Mm -hmm. So, don't take my word for it. It may not be free elsewhere. True. Um, let's see. It's only 4.11. Wow, we got a couple few minutes to kill. Oh, let's see. I'm like, I'm telling you. Now, the, sh the, um, the thing that we were talking about with autographs... Unlocked has an actual store. It's shop.unlockedofficial.com where you can buy stuff that's already autographed by people that have done their autograph sessions already. Um, Aaron um, Zecht has done it. Kyle um, He Bear. Um, Todd Hapricorn has done Do an autograph the session. One I got from Kyle he Bear? Um, yeah, let me see. Eyes in one. Oh, oh, wait, you told me that. I remember that. Eyes in one. Yes, I am getting eyes in one. Oh, at 28. It gave you chills, didn't it? Yes, it did. I was like, no, he has not come back. I refuse to see eyes like, in nope, the Nope, nope, nope. La, 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 la. Like that scene from Liar, Liar, where Jim Carrey is running down the hallway with <laughs> La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> that is everybody that doesn't want to hear a spoiler about anything, or they don't want to hear something that they want to hear. Going la 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 uh, la. He said something about Rukia, and I was like, ah! No, no, uh, he's not back. No, nope, nope, nope. Like you're in a fetal position. You're like, he's not back. He's not back. He's not back. It's a figment of my imagination. He's not back. No, he's not back. Please. Uh huh. But he's still alive. But it's not confirmed. Hmm. You didn't see the end of the Eisen arc, did you? I did see the end of the Eisen arc. He's still alive. They didn't kill him. Ah oh, darn it! I thought they killed him. No. Darn it. Ah oh, darn. Oh well. Uh, Wishful thinking. <laughs> what is this? They just made it so he can't see or can't talk. Oh. And can't move. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking... That's enough to drive anybody a little cuckoo mm -hmm. in the coconut. <laughs> coconut. Um, sorry, I was looking at a thing from Unlock. They just uh, put out a tweet that's saying um, Ricky Simmons, the voice of Gert from Invader Zim, is going to be doing an autograph session on Wednesday. Okay. Next week. But, eh. Like, I love Invader Zim, but I'm more interested in... Not uh, that much. Yeah. Like, I liked it when it was on Nickelodeon, but not anymore. I'm more of a Todd Havricorn, Vic Vignana, Kyle Hebert type of girl. Or anybody that voices animated char any anime character, period. Missed out on Vic Vignana and Kyle I know. I didn't have the money at the time. But I I'll helped you. Hey, I helped you out with Vic when you, when show when you, when you were at work. He ran out I of it. He ran out of Ed's. But I got you a dark mousy. I know. I, I appreciate that. But I showed up anyway. Yeah, you did. <laughs> like at the la break. like the very last like, ending. I was on break and I was just like, oh, I looked at the time, I was like, oh, I can still get on there. And I grabbed You're like, I'm here. <laughs> and I got on there and uh, she got to talk, talk to Vic. To Vic. <laughs> it was great. It was aw it was awesome too. And now the thing is, is that when Vic streams every Tuesday, he actually he knows his time to stream. Unlike other VAs that are actually on Unlock, there are tons. The guy that versus uh, Mirio from My Hero Academia, the last time he streamed was like back in September of last year. Oh, true. He is still dubbing my hero. That I know. Well, so is John Sweeney. I mean, he's still 
wait till you meet. Uh, I think it's one for all. Yeah, one for all. No, no, no. It's all for one. Oh, sorry, all for one. I keep saying stupid things. Yeah, because that's the power. You got the power of all might, and then the guy that's evil that actually has the same power. So. One for all, and then all for one. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I don't think Chuck Huber has been busy with voicing a lot of anime. Uh, not, not to my knowledge. Um, John Gremion has mostly been um, Food Wars. Food Wars, One Piece. Um, yeah. Chuck Hub yeah, Chuck Huber was Zoro's teacher in One Piece. And I think he was on uh, My He's Hero. Yeah, My Hero, the fog guy. Oh, yeah. He, he was that guy. I was like, oh, my God, he's that guy. Yeah, I did, uh, we didn't know that until we talked to him last year. That was a huge stuff. You're like, oh, I, I was uh, uh, Takamaru's a sidekick or whatever. You're like, what? You were him? Yeah. It's fun to figure out uh, who's voice who and... Just realized you go like, wait, you were that person? Uh, You're like, huh? Oh. I did not know that until I was like, oh my god. Yeah. We're still trying to get more VAs to via Skype oh, yeah. to talk to us, as well as um, possibly to come into the studio and maybe sit right back there at this table. But again, or he, they can just sit right here, right in the middle. <laughs> But the thing is, which camera would they be? There or here? Right here. True. Well, they'd be next to you more than me. Yeah, really? Yeah, they would. They'll be right there next to you. Yeah. You can get as close as you want. Okay, now if, now if we had Johnny That would be and, a little bit creepy, but... No, it wouldn't! <laughs> it would not! <laughs> now, if, now, think about it. If we had Johnny, Vic, and Todd... But it'd be fun. Oh, it'd be a long, like, three-hour thing. I'd have to have my son here because Johnny's here. Oh, my gosh. You know what I would bring and up? Then, <laughs> and then uh, another show would want to be on here. Heck it's like, no. Wait a minute. No. No. Too many people. Access denied. <laughs> Bye. Now, now, if we did get all three of them there and Vic was here, I would bring up the Hey Vic Mignogna song for him. It would go like, I would. No, no, no. You can't. <laughs> well, you cannot do it. Why not? Uh, well, I would give him headphones and he could just listen to it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he probably knows it. Well, it was so long ago. Mm. At least it's not a weird story where a fan literally cut off a lock of their hair and gave it to him at a panel. Or a. What? Yeah, it's on there. It's on there where fans would ask, um, what were the weirdest thing a fan has ever done or given you? A fan at one point, it was a Full Metal Alchemist panel. It was himself, Laura Bailey, and Travis Willingham. All three of them were there. And eventually one person comes up to the table, gives them a little folded envelope, and next you know, a chunk of hair falls out. Yeah, they gave Vic a I, lock of their bet, hair. I'm willing to bet that Vic asked, who did you just scalp? <laughs> <laughs> we, if, if he does come in here or if we get a chance to Skype him, we can ask him that. But also, there was another incident at a con where a girl bet all of her money to her friends that she literally asked Vic, can I lick your hand? Yes, no, yes, no. yes, yes, yes. She asked that. And you're oh. like, sweetie, no, no, that that's not right. But then she started crying. You were like, no, no, don't cry, don't cry. And then she was like, she was pointing to the corner where her friends were laughing. She was like, I bet my friends all my money that you do it because you're so nice to your friends. And you're like, oh, man. You literally put out his left arm. And let rip, and it was, uh, uh. <laughs> and then he literally rushed to the bathroom and washed his hands where his skin got red. And then about maybe Don't like, blame you. Don't blame then, you. Oh, then like a few maybe months after that or so, 
Then next thing you know, a girl comes up to his autograph session where he's signing autographs. And she went like, you remember me? He was like, um, no. Then she was like, let me give you a hint. And then he backed up real quick. He got like, scary. He backed up so quick. He like, that poor man. Uh, Hopefully she wasn't there to do that again. I oh yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not either. Now, okay, the funny she thing she could have just said, "I made a bet with my friends to lick your hand." Yeah, but she didn't. She pulled the tear card and just did that. No, I mean, when you know when she went to see him a second time at his autograph session. She could have she, just said that. She, she didn't have to go, ah. Yeah. Oh, I would have backed up, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either way, though. That's gross. You know, the funny thing is, is that Vic always has the wildest stories, yet other VAs don't have any. Well, oh, they choose not to have any. Or they just don't talk about it. There's like, you know. There's probably been some weird ones. Well. There was that one time where Vic told the story about the uh, thing with Monica and the tequila shots. <laughs> I don't know if I want to hear it. No, no, no. It, it, it's not weird. The thing is, is that bo- it was at a con. It was him, Travis, and then Monica before all the craziness went down. Um, basically, for every one shot that she took... Travis would take two. So, oh. literally, after that, Travis literally, they were out, they were outside the hotel. Fans were um, looking. Vic was waiting on Travis. The next thing you know, Travis slums over to him. A bit, you know, uh, you know a bit uh, tipsy. Um, saying, like, you know what, man? You know what? Like, you're a good person, okay? I love, I love you, man. And you're like, you know how many... You know how many shots I took? I took 14 shots. Oh, my God. I took 14, man, and you're just awesome. Hey, this guy is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I can't make this stuff up if I wanted to. It is out there on YouTube. If you look up Vic Mignogna tequila story about Travis... It's there. I could make this stuff up if I wanted to. Because believe it or not, cameras are always rolling, y'all. Even Whether you wanted to or not. Yeah, even when uh, somebody's always watching. Mm-hmm. It's even more funnier when you see the voice actors perform like love confessions in their characters, like with Ed and Link, Todd and Mickey. Like Link, you wanted to tell me something. <laughs> Link, you want to tell me something? You're like. I want you to rule beside me as my queen. You go like, before I could sit, you said blip. What is that? Oh, um, it's where two people love each other, Facebook each other, and become friends. <laughs> you go like, like, will you tag me in all the photos? Or if you tag me all the photos that you've been in. You go like, it was, I was young, I needed the money. <laughs> it's just funny when... Um, I was young and needed the, the money. money. Oh, my. It's... Because I think, let's see, so we all know Todd has probably the fastest, he, I think he's really like a kid at heart, because you see how quick his, he's very jumpy. He's not like everywhere, everywhere. He's just got a lot of enthusiasm. He has a Sometimes. lot. Yeah, he has a lot of Sometimes enthusiasm. he's just like, Sometimes like he's that chill. one where he just, Slid underneath the table. Yeah, just go like, yep, I'm just... Like, as he was still talking. And then the last thing you see... It's is his, his feet! feet. <laughs> and then and someone's poking so him, making sure he's okay. And then he's like, you on the left with the hat. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, that's you! <laughs> clearly that, that um, tablecloth was see-through. Because clearly he could see through it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, there's one particular video that I watch of Todd. It was like an older video where he's doing his intimidation of 
Death the Kid. At, well, his voice. Imitation. Out. Impersonation or something. I don't know. <laughs> Again, something, like something. He's basically quoting lines in either Hikaru, Alan Walker, Italy, or Tajima, or Death the Kid. And it's hilarious. Where, especially the Death the Kid rants are hilarious. He's going like, you know, I think I would have a problem with the microphones that are set on the table accordingly, but the only thing that's wrong is their placement on the table. It's not right! <laughs> I can't do it. Symmetrical. It's not symmetrical. <laughs> now, when he did his Alan Walker line, he was literally talking about food, and then the last part was Italy from Italia, where he said, and I'll top it off with a Vic Mignotta pasta! <laughs> For those of you who did not watch Italia, or at least do not know what it is, if you want to look it up, go ahead. It's just funny. <laughs> but there's one part of the video in particular where he's basically talking about his uh, young, his dating life when he was younger. He's going like, you know, like, I, yeah, women reject me all the time, so I'm gonna go and do my room and do voices. <laughs> the joke's on you. Then he, this one line is just so hilarious. You go like, why would you want to date me? You're a girl. <laughs> He's like, I'm not a girl. I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> the video does it more justice than I could do it. It's so funny. I kid you not. If you literally look up any of, like, Todd Everworth's panels, he's just goofy. He's funny. She's in love with Todd Everworth. What woman would it be? Hello? I'm in my 20s. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, sorry, but uh, too young. Then who would you go for then, VA-wise? Oh. Who is not married? <laughs> if they were single, who would you go for? Oh, man. Yeah, someone who is not married. Me, Todd, oh, baby, no look me up. Long. We know Travis is married, Delora Bailey. Um, Johnny Bosch is married. Yeah. His daughter is so cute. She is. Um, hmm. Uh -uh. John Swayze's married. married. He's got a daughter. She she's awesome. Mm. She's awesome because of her voice acting. Mm hmm. Um. um. <sighs> hmm. There's not ma very many voice actors that are not married, except for Vic. Vic's not married. No. Even though technically he's been married, what? Except for the little y young ones. I mean, yeah, I'm not going into that one. That's, mm. A lot of younger guys usually date cougars. Uh, this cougar don't do very much. <laughs> This cougar goes to work and goes home. <laughs> um, but I eat, sleep, and work. But I'm saying, yeah. if 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 you had a choice, though, regardless if they were young or old, who would you actually date? Oh, even though I would probably say it. <laughs> probably Vic. Ah, see. Even though I know he would make me work out. No. I don't think uh, Michelle worked out with him, but I don't know. I know Todd would probably oh, work out did. with him. Mm, somewhat. Either way, though. Um, at least get, I, I at least need to get some push in. Just walk. Because my foot's not getting any better. So. Mm. Well, you know, that would help. You know, that would help somewhat. Be walking more. Well, <laughs> if I take my dog with me. My dog would take me for a walk. Travis loves dogs. <laughs> I love dogs. dogs. <laughs> now, it's funny that we always bring up, like, certain names. And we always talk about this in the car when we're on our way here. That if we had certain VAs and we performed, like, funny skits or whatever while we're out in public, just thinking of the reaction of people, what would happen if we actually had this filmed and then put up on our YouTube page and see how many reactions we would get. 
like you know the thing with the zoo like like Vic would be the uncle Todd would probably be the brother or like my younger brother I'd be like the little wait 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 what Todd the man who's older than you are would be your younger brother hey there are a lot of siblings that have a huge age gap plus I could pass for brother well older brother okay. <laughs> yeah he'd be <laughs> yeah 37 you You're made him younger, younger. <laughs> brother. no he'd be yeah he'd be my older brother or big brother and then i'd be the niece and then travis would be the father or whatever or uncle i don't know how that would work i don't know if he <laughs> would like that no because Doesn't he? I think so. No, they have a son. Okay, they have a son who's probably barely out of diapers, and all of a sudden, oh, we have a 21 year old. <laughs> that changes everything. Who's a girl? <laughs> yeah. But I really think though, if that if we did get them together and we pull off like a little skit or something at like the zoo or wherever else, yeah, Travis would. Probably be the father. I'd be the younger sister. Todd would be the older brother, and then Vic would just be the uncle that just looks young. You go like, you know, I you would look. Just, be saying bye. Just, just think of all the shenanigans. Bye. Just think of all the shenanigans that would probably ensue with all I of us around. Partner. You would have a part in it. You'd just be on standby. <laughs> you go. Like, Vic would probably go like, Shar, do something about I this. Want standby to play. Sister, in case you can't fulfill her role. <laughs> Vic would probably pull you aside and go like, "Shar, do something about this." You go like, "He start, he like, he started it." You're like, "I did not." You just have a girl's voice anyway. Look, you talking shrimp. <laughs> I am just be a on standby. <laughs> That'd be funny if me and Todd just got into a random argument. You go like, "Dad, Todd's being a pain again." I am not. She's the one that started. You're the one that picked my hair. <laughs> go like it's not like I ruined a date. And you're like, when did you ever have a date? <laughs> like, yeah. Everybody go. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> go like at least I have a date. Well, I choose not to date boys that are snobby. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a very weird. <laughs> that'd be a fun <laughs> thing to do, though. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. It would. And this is the girl that wants to go on a date with. Hey, when you think about it, we're some eh, somewhat the same almost. And I'm gonna share this with Todd. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but when you th you because when you think about it, I probably have the same energy level as he does. I don't know. We won't know. I think he might have more. Well, he works out. He voiced a lot of characters so either way um i don't know i know i have a lot of energy like he's on panels he's like Vic. he doesn't sit down he stands up todd stands up and sometimes he'll walk around but Vic yeah. will literally get up and walk around everywhere oh yeah yes i have he's not yeah. known to be sitting still <laughs> he'll sometimes go out in the audience yeah. Go all the way in the back. You <laughs> go all the way in the back row. All the way, go all the way in the back, back row. You go like, you go like. There's no way he's coming back here to pick any of us. So we're gonna go all the way to the back. <laughs> uh, e either way, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could probably compete with Todd on an energy level. Mm, he may just be slow. Why? Because he's a man. <laughs> Please. <laughs> he just has more energy. And you're saying I don't? You have more energy than I do. Of course, because it's an age thing. Mm hmm. But Todd, I don't think it has to do with age. He just has energy, and you can hear it in his voice. True. I mean, yeah, he does some good voices, sure. But he, yeah, he. Oh my god. He just naturally has energy. 
You know what? Instead of when somebody... He's, when he's talking like uh, Italy, I can't understand a word he's saying. Even, even like, literally, when he's doing a lot of long monologues, I'm All surprised... All I understand is pasta. That's it. You're like, no, please don't hurt me! I'm just trying to eat my pasta in peace! <laughs> well, see, when you say it, I can understand it. But when he says That's because he's saying it very fast. I know. That's the reason why I say it. Can't understand it. Like, he's saying, like, quick, Jarvis, they help me! They have me hot since I just want to enjoy my pasta in peace! Please help me! Yeah, I have to take a breath just saying that. Jesus. That's the reason why he's a trained voice actor. Yeah, because he has acting experience. He went to college for it. Well, theater experience, at least. No, it's he got acting classes. Yes. All right, what show are we watching today? Actually, no, not that one. Mm. Oh, another mecha show. Cool. Yeah, kind of. But this one has John Bosch in it. Johnny! Yay! Uh, Faulkner, Dead Aggressor. Probably because it's, uh, you hit, like, a collection of them or something. No. Oh, it's saying, sign in to confirm your age. Boy, what? All right, so let's try the other one. Mars Daybreak. Who's in this one? John Bosch. Hmm. No, nah, it's one of those other ones. Darn it. Does it have any closing captions or no? I don't even think that is it. That's not it. Starship Operator? They probably don't have it. I think that's just how it looks. No. Ah, oh, really? Why they had to put a filter over it? Ah! So not fair. Probably to avoid copyright or whatever. It's always Johnny Boss that always voices characters with, like, cool hair. Especially if he's out to save Mama. Oh, it's their opening! Uh-huh. That doesn't mean it's an episode, it just shows the opening. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> Sorry. 
The D the D bomb slept slipped out on accident. We are sorry. But at least our content on YouTube is not meant for children. So Can't see what Ohio Cons retweeted. Oh, they got indie game showcase. Not interested. Mm-hmm. My tweet I put up of five hours ago of Vic. It's got eleven likes. Oh, two people retweeted it and three people commented on it. I love it. This is not cool, y'all. Uh, yeah. Johnny Bosch is in this one also. He plays that character, right? Or not that one. The guy, that, that guy? guy, yeah. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So this is Paradise Kiss. Hmm. <laughs> it's always fun when someone's really old, the character just shakes. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, they don't have any captions. Darn. Godzilla. I like how in the beginning of it, they mixed, like, real, um, shots from Japan in the series. That was, that's cool. I forget the, there was another popular voice actor in the show as well. He plays the main character. That dude right there. Hmm. Can you think of his initials? I might be able to name him. I don't know. Oh, he plays Sloth. 
Wait. Then zoom out off its further hood. Mm. I can't think of his name. Those of you wanting to know what we're watching, we're watching Paradise Kiss, episode one. Where Johnny Boss is voicing one of the characters. Yep. He plays one of her schoolmates. The animation style kind of reminds me of Ghost in the Shell. Bro, what a waste of a burger! You ate it, dude. Is that a safety pin in his mouth? Uh-huh. Well... That is not cool looking. That's weird. Apparently he never heard of lip rings before. <laughs> Red Panda. <laughs> Shinigami. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> No, the creator of Paradise Kiss.
has a safety pin in his eyebrow and in his lip. Wow. Uh oh, she dropped something. <laughs> Pain is a secret term for love. <laughs> That be the boy that she likes that the person's talking to up front in the class? Mm, I didn't see it. Sorry. What? Oh. Oh, uh, so there's a boy that she likes, and she wasn't paying attention to her surroundings. Yeah, There's yeah. Johnny's character! Yeah, damn. Took him already. Ah, so she likes him. I get it. Hmm? Hero Yuki. Okay. Ooh, he's very smooth. Almost looks very. like a almost looks like a crime lord or something. But is very romantic with it. <laughs> like one of those mob bosses. <laughs> oh wait, that's George. Uh -huh. He's like a romantic mob gangster. <laughs> Uh, 
Johnny played Jonathan Joestar, but I forgot. Oh, you know what? I'm going to look that up right now. <laughs> Patrick. Patrick Price? Yes. Yeah, that's him. Oh! He's got that smooth, smooth suave voice. Smooth, suave voice. <laughs> no! Whoa, do tear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Whoa, Prince of Character. <laughs> Why? Oh. Liar? <laughs> <laughs> Yowie moment! Yowie <laughs> moment! Let's see. So this counts as a yaoi or in high school host club kind of serves of yaoi with the Itachi twins and Yuri on Ice also serves as yaoi. So, yep. It's no stranger. Hmm. She's so nervous about that. Wouldn't you be if it was your hair? Bro. But the and thing is, you don't, don't know. know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would be nervous, too. Wow. Oh. They gave her bangs. Hmm. And we're busy. Fitting. <laughs> uh, ah! Uh, <laughs> a drag queen! <laughs> a drag no! queen! No, okay. The last time I probably saw a character that was basically a boy in woman's clothing was probably with Vic's character, but I've seen one before. It was in Brothers Conflict, where... Todd Hapricorn plays a character that wears women's clothing <laughs> and is a boy. <laughs> yeah. Boob envy. <laughs> and that's the name. Park a kiss. Paradise kiss. Of their clothing line. Mm-hmm. Is 
that's her older sister said. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh. Layers upon layers of fashion clothing. <laughs> you want like George is a good student? Wow. She looks amazing. Pretty. Wow. She's a perfect match. <laughs> oh, look at him. <laughs> look at him. He started. It looks like he's starting to cry. <laughs> You're like. <laughs> You're like fed in the cute. Right? Oh, he's so nervous. Sorry. <laughs> You're like, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Lip hanger. Will she say yes or no? Mm. Is it over yet? Almost. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Funky visuals ending. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's over. Yeah, All it's right. Over. Well, it is 5.04. We finished watching Paradise Kiss. Not the version that we wanted, but we saw what was the original Japanese, um, the original Japanese subtitles of it. Yeah. Um, Either way, we're going to see subtitles anyway. Mm hmm Either way, thank you guys for tuning in so much. Make sure you guys, if you spot any of us Otaku Knots while you're at OhioCon on Saturday, make sure, you know, say hi, stop by. Um, you know, maybe, well, I don't think we're that really that famous yet, but either way, <laughs> we're working on it. Just say it. hi to us. Just say yes. hi, and also subscribe to the Apocalypse Otaku channel. Sharing is caring. Like, we post every Thursday after we're done streaming on Twitch. So, yep. And we make sure um, you guys subscribe, hit that like button. Um, we keep you informed about all of our shenanigans that go on outside of our daily lives, anime-wise. Um, DVD, manga, you name it, we cover it. Our battle royale is down, dwindling down. We are down to four now. We are down to our four remaining ladies in our magical girl battle royale. Now, it would help us out a ton if any of you guys have any suggestions on Battle Royales, because once we do this one, we don't know what to do next. We were reaching the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> yeah. The For this one, one yeah. Battle. This was a real, oh. real bottom of the barrel type of battle. Now, we're, we are open to any suggestions as long as no 
Dragon Ball Z of any no kind. Dragon Ball Z. No Dragon Ball at all. No Dragon Ball. It has um, to be an anime that we have not covered. Make sure you guys look at all of our past videos to make sure that we have not already covered that anime that has faced another one. Check those videos out first. We've already done Bleach. We done uh, Black Clover. We done One Piece. We done My, My Hero, Hero Academia. Oh God, that was that was freaky. We all we. <laughs> We always say something at the same time without knowing it. We're not even related by blood at all, but yet we have that like weird when, connection. When, when somebody asked us if we could say something about the Patriots on our web show. Oh, we yeah. Like, you're like, no. no. <laughs> you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're not like, we're no. like, I think that's just good. <laughs> You know what? That's just good chemistry w that we have yeah. as working together, like Norlin North and Troy Baker. They have good chemistry together, and, and so do we. They don't. I mean, there are times when you know we're on point, and there's time, there's a few times we haven't been, but you know. Yeah, but we have good chemistry together, which makes us a, a awesome team. That's right. And you know, and we work hard. Um, outside of this as well as working to try to get more VAs here yep. um, here in the Ohio area as well as to oh, Skype she's interviews as well than I, am. I am I am blowing up Twitter like a mad woman if, if there was a Some thing is uh, one of them has even asked her to stop that was last year and so far Colossal Khan has not updated. Their guest list, or uh, last I checked, last we checked, they didn't update anything that I know of for right now. I haven't checked at so all. So I'm still going to bug the holy bejesus out of any cons that are located in the area. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to bug them like crazy. If there was such a thing as social media bombing, I've done it. Yeah, she has. I've done it. She <laughs> I am a. Candy bomb. <laughs> I am <laughs> I am a suicide social media bomber. There. I'm putting that out there. <laughs> I am a social media suicide bomber. That is what I am. I am labeling myself as that. Cause a kamikaze. Mm hmm Yep, I am. I am a kamikaze. Either way, um we will be at OhioCon this coming Saturday. We will try to catch some panels, catch some probably VAs. Won't recognize me because I have purple hair, but that's okay. You probably won't recognize me either. There will probably be tons of people there dressed up as cosplay. We'll see probably people in cosplay. We'll see people in cosplay that we probably don't even know the show that they're from, or we'll try to guess where they're, which anime they're cosplaying from. We'll see voice actors like Steve Bloom, Mary Dismuke, Wendy Powell. Um, Brittany, Brian Bukowski. We wanted some of them to come to our, be on the show today, but we might just have to catch them while they're there. And yeah. if and you know if they're willing to actually and do it, I then yeah. I want to interview Wendy Powell, but hers is like from eight to nine p.m. Oh yeah, we probably won't be able to get her. <laughs> so yeah, I I gotta drive all the way back home from downtown Columbus. That's an hour drive. Mm -hmm. Just to get out of downtown, it's probably just going to be an hour drive. Mm -hmm. Because our downtown and area is very busy. Her off home. Mm -hmm. And then I got to drive home. Yep. But at least once you drop me off, it won't be that much of a ride back home, will it? Or No, it's not. It's a straight shot. Okay, it should be a straight shot back home. Yeah, from where you get me from. But either way, we got to get out of here. We got to prepare for this coming Saturday for OhioCon. And we just got a lot going on. But we'll, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Or you could probably catch me or Char on one of either, mostly next Tuesday for either on John Gramion or Vic Mignogna streams on Plus Unlocked. Plus we'll probably be recording our experience at OhioCon and we'll probably post that on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Under our page, so you can experience well technically this will be Shar's second con experience, my first. Um, my first con was not a very good experience. Ugh. I'm real excited. Let's hope they uh, 
friggin' the Miles Brothers. Yeah. That's a, a lot of time it's stu it's stunk. <laughs> Not in the in literally, literally and figuratively. It's stunk. Figuratively and literally, it's a stunk. People have they, not heard of deodorant. <laughs> they were Ohio Column was not online. Mm -hmm. And so you couldn't get any schedule. Mm -mm. But now you got the schedule. Now you got the schedule online and you know when to get there. Mm -hmm. We have to get there really early, especially for Saturday to catch uh, Steve Boom's. We have to catch Steve Boom's autographs. We are going to be. We better make sure we have tons of coffee. Or at least me. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I, I probably have to, but, oh, man. We're at least going to need it, because early as we have to be there before um, Steve starts signing, at least we get a few, at least we're a few feet of, or hope that we're early enough in line to actually get to talk to him, because, because we, sh I don't know if we're going to get there early <laughs> enough. The thing is, is that where the hotel is, that, some of the stuff is being held for Ohio Con is about like a little ways of a walk to There's, get there. I know where it is. It's downtown. Town. I mean downtown yeah. Columbus. Yeah. And in like the arena I district. It's, yeah. It's close to the arena district and there is a parking garage that's connected to it. So hopefully get there early enough. I can't say we will. Let's hope so. And hopefully they don't have a cutoff. Oh, if they do. I'm mm. not going to be happy. No one's going to be happy if they have well, a cutoff. Well, no, if they cut us off, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> I'll be like, wait, wait a minute, what are you, no, you're not cutting me off. Excuse me. Yeah, not going <laughs> to happen. I'm coming through. Not going to happen. All right, guys, we are going to get out of here. We will be at OhioCon this coming Saturday. Say hi, and remember, watch anime until you die. Because that is the Apocalypse Otaku Day. See you guys next week. Have a good night. Bye.